Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture of 19 SC PHY U301. We have been discussing the first chapter complex numbers and this is the story so far. Quadratic equations are equations of this form ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0. So they are the polynomials of second degree. a, b, c are called as coefficients of the quadratic equation. Values of x for which this equation is satisfied or the left hand side is equal to 0 which is the right hand side then those values of x are called as the roots of quadratic equation and roots of quadratic equation can be calculated by using this formula x is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a with plus sign we get first root and with negative sign we get the second root for the quadratic equation they are important for complex numbers because when the term inside the square root when this term is less than zero then we have to use the concept of complex numbers to write down the roots we also saw that if a b c the coefficients of quadratic equations are real numbers then roots of the quadratic equations are either real or if they are complex roots then the two roots are complex conjugate of each other then we considered a few definitions suppose z is equal to x plus i y is the complex number then real part of this complex number z is equal to x and imaginary part of the complex number is equal to y keep in mind that both real and imaginary parts of complex numbers are real numbers the imaginary part is called imaginary because of multiplication of i to that imaginary part then we define complex conjugate for a complex number z is equal to x plus i y its complex conjugate z star is equal to x minus i y it is obtained by reversing the sign of the imaginary part we also define two more terms modulus of complex number and argument of the complex number modulus of complex number is given by this equation it is den denoted by z mod is equal to square root of x square plus y square you should always keep in mind that modulus is always a real positive number argument of complex number argument of z is obtained by tan inverse of y by x now for this lecture this is the plan we will first briefly discuss what are dimensions of a given system we will discuss that specifically in reference with these two terms one real numbers are one dimensional whereas complex numbers are two dimensional then we'll see a way to plot a complex number in a plane that plane is called as argon diagram we had postponed the interpretation of these three definitions in the last lecture. We will revisit these definitions and interpret their meanings from geometrical point of view. With the new interpretation, the rules that we have considered for finding out the argument of complex number would start making sense. Let us ask ourselves this question. What are the dimensions of a given system? We will give the simplest possible answer for that question number of parameters that are to be given to express the system fully are called as the dimensions of that system and therefore when we consider object which has height width and depth it becomes a three-dimensional object if we consider surface of the earth it is now of two dimension or in fact that is the case for any surface whether it is plane surface or whether it is a curved surface for earth surface we can give the latitude and longitude and that way we can specify any position on the earth now real number is clearly a one dimensional system and since it is one dimensional it can be now plotted on a one dimensional figure which is a straight line the simplest possible one dimensional figure is a st straight line how do we do it we first define an origin this origin is now zero for the given number line and then suppose i want to specify a number which is 4.6 plus 4.6 then what i do is i measure length along right hand side now which is equal to 
and then that point which is at a distance of 4.6 from the origin towards right hand side becomes the positive 4.6 on the other hand if i want to plot minus 4.6 i measure a distance towards left hand side of that origin at a distance 4.6 towards left of the origin which represents minus 4.6 so this is how we can express one dimensional numbers on the number line. Now if we consider complex numbers they are clearly two dimensional. You can see that when you write the generic form of a complex number z is equal to x plus i y. To express any complex number you have to specify the real part of that complex number and you have to specify the imaginary part of that complex number and once these two real numbers are expressed the complex number z is fully expressed and therefore complex numbers are two dimensional what we need to plot a complex number now is a plane because the numbers are two dimensional two dimensional we will need a figure which is also two dimensional and simplest two dimensional figure can be a plane that plane in which a complex number is plotted is called as the argon diagram what we do is this x axis or the horizontal axis of argon diagram is the real part it represents the real part of complex number and therefore is called as real axis the vertical axis of argon diagram represents the imaginary part and therefore is called as the imaginary axis now with this argon diagram or with plane with real and imaginary axis you can represent any complex number suppose you want to represent z which is x plus i y for demonstration purpose, I'll consider that x is positive and y is also positive. So what we have to do is this point where real and imaginary axis intersect becomes the origin. It is the position with 0, 0. x is also 0 and y is equal to 0. Then we move towards right hand side if x is positive and consider a line which is away from the origin and which is parallel to this imaginary axis then we move upward on this imaginary axis at a distance which is equal to y and draw another line which is now parallel to real axis wherever these two points meet now is the point which represents the number x plus i y the rules for plotting a complex number in the plane are very similar to that of rules in number line if x is positive we move towards right hand side of real axis if x is negative we then move towards left hand side of this origin if y is positive then we move upward along imaginary axis and if it is negative then move then we move in downward direction and in this way we can plot any number any complex number in this argon plane now note that a real number is always a special case of complex number for real numbers all these imaginary parts are zeros Therefore, all the real numbers lie on this real axis of in argon plane. Complex numbers are similar to two-dimensional vectors. A two-dimensional vector v can be written like this vxi plus vyj where vx and vy are called as x and y components of the vector respectively and i and j are the unit vectors i along x-axis positive x-axis and j is a unit vector along positive y axis and a vector v then is geometrically represented like this an arrow starting from the origin the x component of this arrow is given by vx and y component is given by vy in this case this is the x axis and this is the y axis this point is the origin where x and y axis meet and that is 0 0 vector or a zero vector with x component equal to zero and y equal to y component equal to zero when it comes to argon diagram instead of calling them as x axis and y axis we call them as real and imaginary axis now z which is a complex number is written like this x plus i y a complex number then can be plotted in this diagram in this plane as a point where this component is equal to x and this component is equal to y and therefore in this argon plane it is a position vector with x as x component and y as y component for the given complex number 
Now this is how they are similar addition of two dimensional vectors and complex number is also same geometrically we'll see that later. Now let's consider a few examples of complex number let's let's consider example from each quadrant let's say z1 is equal to 1 plus 2i I want to plot this complex number in the Argand plane. In Argand plane this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. To plot this number z1 what I do is I consider a distance towards positive side because real part is now posit positive which is equal to 1, 1 unit and then we consider a distance along imaginary axis since imaginary part is also positive we consider distance which is equal to 2 along imaginary part then we draw these parallel lines this is drawn at a distance 2 towards positive side of imaginary axis and this line is drawn at a distance 1 unit towards the positive side of real axis intersection of these two lines now is the complex number z1 plotted in the argon diagram let's consider z2 which is equal to minus 4 plus 3i can you now guess in which quadrant this complex number would lie the number lies in the second quadrant how do we plot that number now we first consider a distance which is 4 towards negative real axis now this is definitely not drawn to the scale I haven't actually measured the distance from the origin then I draw a line there which is parallel to imaginary axis and which passes from that point then I consider this plus 3 so what I have to do now I have to move along positive side of imaginary axis and consider a point which is at 3 unit distance away towards the imaginary axis draw a line there and wherever these two lines meet becomes the complex number z2 which is equal to minus 4 plus 3i let's consider another number z3 which is equal to 1.5 minus 2i now can you guess the quadrant of this complex number this complex number lies in the fourth quadrant what I do is I first move towards positive side of real axis at a distance 1.5 and draw a line parallel to the imaginary axis then I move towards negative side of imaginary axis by 2 so it should that point should be somewhere here and draw a line which is parallel to real axis and wherever these two lines meet now becomes the number z3 which is 1.5 minus 2i in this way you can plot a complex number in argon plane now let's revisit the definitions that we considered in last lecture first the complex conjugate if a complex number is minus 1 minus 2i can you guess the quadrant of this complex number it should lie in the third quadrant what I have to do I have to consider this distance which is now 1 but towards the negative side of real axis and then I consider a distance which is 2 along negative side of imaginary axis and then I have to draw these two lines passing through the two points and where these two lines meet is now the number z which is given by minus 1 minus 2i now complex conjugate of this number z star is given by minus 1 plus 2i I reverse the sign of imaginary part and that gives me the complex conjugate now let me draw these lines I can say that this is position vector for complex number z now where will z star be what what is going to be the quadrant of that it is in second quadrant now I have to consider a distance minus 1 towards negative side of real axis so this line is going to be same for that which I have drawn for z the difference is in the imaginary part in case of z I move towards 
negative side of imaginary part but in this case now I have to move in the opposite direction. If Z had positive imaginary part for finding out the complex conjugate I would have to move towards the negative side of that and then I draw a line parallel to real axis at that distance in this case it is going to be two units and then this point is Z star now so if this is Z let me erase this so if this is Z then this is Z star and this is the position vector which represents Z star so if you think about it a complex number and its complex conjugate they are mirror images about this real axis if I consider a number which is at this point then it's com if this this was my z prime which is the complex number then its complex conjugate z prime star would be a mirror image of z prime about real axis and that is true in general you can convince yourself for that now let's consider the next definition modulus suppose my complex number z is equal to x plus i y i am writing the complex number in the generic form for demonstration purpose, I'll consider that X and Y are both positive and therefore the complex number lies in the first quadrant of Argand plane. So this is the real axis and this is the imaginary axis. Suppose Z is this point. That means this distance is equal to X and this distance is equal to Y. Let me join the origin and the point which represents the complex number x plus i y. Now you can see that a right angle triangle has been formed with x y and this is the diagonal of that right angle triangle. Let me call that as r. Now you can use Pythagoras theorem and write a relation sorry and write a relation between x, y and r. What is going to be that relation? r square is equal to x square plus y square. So r is equal to square root of x square plus y square. Have you seen this right hand side before in this course? It is nothing but mod z or modulus of z which is equal to square root of x square plus y square. So this way we have a geometrical interpretation for modulus and we have at the same time the reason why it is called as the absolute value. Why it is called as absolute value? Because it gives us the distance between the point which represents the complex number and the origin and that is absolute value. Now since it is a distance it has to be positive and it has to be real which we can see here geometrically modulus is a distance of point representing the complex number from the origin and therefore it has to be real and positive. Let's consider four examples one from each of the quadrant z1 is equal to 1 plus 2i. What is the quadrant? It is now the first quadrant z2 is 1 minus 2i. Now this number lies in the fourth quadrant z3 which is minus 2 plus i what is quadrant now it is in second quadrant and z4 which is say minus 1 minus 2i so we have these four numbers four complex numbers let's try to plot these complex numbers in the argand plane and then we will find out the modulus or absolute value of each of the complex numbers now let's first plot z1 as I said it is in the first quadrant I have to consider this distance which is equal to 1 and this distance along positive side of imaginary axis which is roughly double of real part so the complex number will be here and this right angle triangle is formed now mod z1 is equal to square root of this distance is 2 remember it's square root of 1 square plus 2 square so it is square root of 5 I am leaving it to the viewers to find the decimal representation of square root of 5 I'll write it z square root of 5 now so mod z1 is square root of 5 
then z2 what is the quadrant it is now the fourth quadrant so the number is somewhere here since now you can see z1 and z2 their complex conjugate of each other and we expect that z2 is mirror image of z1 about this real axis this is real and this is imaginary axis so this number is going to be at this point where its base is 1 and this height is equal to 2 and therefore mod z2 now is going to be equal to same as mod z1 which is square root of 5 let's consider z3 now z3 is in second quadrant so minus 2 i have to move towards negative real axis at a by a distance of minus 2 and then move towards positive side of the imaginary axis by unit distance and this is going to be the complex number z3 now mod z3 is again same as square root of 5 you can convince yourself that this is the line which joins the origin and the complex number now let's come to z4 z3 and z4 now are complex conjugate of each other and therefore z4 is going to be here mirror image of z3 about this real axis and this distance again is same as square root of 5 you can convince yourself that all the complex number which have same modulus or which have same absolute value they should all lie on a circle with radius as the modulus of those complex number and the center of that circle is origin it doesn't look like a circle in this case i'm sorry for that not a good diagram one more thing that i missed is i'll i'll draw this in this square if z star is complex conjugate of complex number z then complex conjugate of that or z star star which is complex conjugate so z star star now is complex conjugate of z star is same as z so if i take complex conjugate of a complex number and then again take complex conjugate of that complex conjugate i get the same complex number z just a fun fact now here is the geometrical interpretation of modulus now let's consider this definition argument of a complex number let me write the complex number as x plus i y and argument of that complex number is obtained by taking tan inverse of y by x let me plot this z now it is this distance is x then this distance is y and the complex number z is this point now a right angle triangle is formed with its base as x and height as y this r is now the modulus of complex number which is distance between the origin and the point which represents the complex number in this triangle suppose this angle is theta let me call that angle as theta for that angle theta let's find out tan theta in right angle triangle is ratio of opposite side of the angle which is y in this case to adjacent side which is x and therefore theta can be calculated by this formula tan inverse of y by x now do you see the geometrical interpretation of argument now it is nothing but the angle made by the line joining the origin and the complex number with positive real axis so this angle here and therefore it can be in any of the quadrant depending on which quadrant the complex number lies this theta, theta changes it changes from 0 to 360 degree if you consider only the counterclockwise rotation or we can consider the range to be from minus 180 degree to plus 180 degrees but as i said we write the argument in radians this range is either from 0 to 2 pi or is from minus pi to plus pi this is the geometrical interpretation of argument it is the angle made by the line joining the origin and the point rep which represents complex number with positive real axis let's consider a few examples let's consider z which is in first quadrants so its real part is positive 
and its complex part is also positive. Let's first plot the point. Square root of 3 is 1.73. Z is going to be somewhere here, where this distance is 1.7 roughly, and this distance is equal to 1. This is x, and this is y. This is r, which is same as mod z and mod z is equal to square root of 3 root 3 square plus 1 square so it is equal to 4 so mod z is equal to 2 so distance between the origin and the point which represents complex number is equal to 2 let's find out the argument for this complex number theta is equal to tan inverse of y by x or tan inverse of 1 by root 3 therefore theta is equal to pi by 6 radians let's consider a complex number which is now in second quadrant so if it is in second quadrant that means its real part is negative let me call that as minus 3 and its imaginary part is positive so let's say it is 1 and therefore we have i there this complex number now is somewhere here where this distance is equal to 1.73 roughly and this distance is equal to 1. This is the right angle triangle which is formed. This angle is 90 degree. R or mod z or the distance between the origin and that point is square root of root 3 square or minus root 3 square which is 3 plus 1 so it is same as the previous problem it is 2 let me call that angle as phi and tan phi is equal to 1 by root 3 now phi therefore is equal to pi by 6 radians is this phi the argument of the complex number remember argument of a complex number is angle made by this line line joining the origin and the point which represents complex number with positive real axis and therefore it is this angle if this phi is equal to pi by 6 then theta which is the argument of complex number must be equal to pi minus pi by 6 which is which is 5 pi by 6 radians. Let's consider another example. The third quadrant is already highlighted. Z now, let's consider a similar Z is now minus root 3 minus i. So real part is minus root 3 and imaginary part is minus 1. The point is going to be somewhere here this is 1.73 roughly which is square root of 3 and this is 1 if I join these two points the point which represents the complex number and the origin then length of this line is mod z which you can see is going to be equal to 2 let's calculate this angle phi phi since this is right angle triangle, phi is tan inverse of 1 by root 3, which is equal to pi by 6 radians. Now, is phi the argument of the complex number? No. The argument of the complex number is angle made by this line with positive real axis. For this angle can be now represented in two ways. I can either choose to represent it like this. So I am rotating this real positive axis clockwise to reach this line and therefore the angle will now this angle now will be negative. So this is theta which is argument of z now is equal to minus pi plus pi by 6 so this is equal to minus 5 pi by 6 or I can choose to write this angle as positive angle and if I am writing it as positive angle I rotate positive real axis clockwise and reach at this point and theta then which is also the argument of the complex number z which is now 5 sorry pi 
plus pi by 6 which is 7 pi by 6 let's consider one more example many of you have already guessed that this complex number is going to be plus square root of 3 minus i which is in fourth quadrant and this distance is equal to 1.73 which is square root of 3 this distance is equal to 1 and I get this right angle triangle for this particular complex number r is going to be same which is mod z which is going to be equal to 2 let's find out this angle phi now phi is equal to tan inverse of y by x or 1 by root 3 which is equal to pi by 6 radians so if you noticed here in all these cases i considered the triangle and found out that phi and then depending on which quadrant the complex number is in i decide what is the argument of the complex number in this case again there are two ways i can write argument of complex number this angle theta a negative number in that case i rotate real positive axis clockwise and i have to rotate by angle phi therefore if i write th theta as negative angle it is minus pi by 6 radians if i choose to write theta as positive angle then i have to ro rotate this positive real axis in this direction and therefore I, this theta it is going to be equal to 2 pi minus pi by 6 which is equal to 11 pi by 6 this is how you can calculate the modulus this is how i recommend it you find out the triangle find out this angle phi and then depending on in which quadrant the complex number is you can decide what is the argument as we have done in the examples that's all for today's lecture this is the summary we first saw that complex number is two dimension because it needs two numbers to represent completely you have to give the real part and then you have to give the imaginary part of the complex number and hence it is two dimensional now since the number is two dimensional you need a two dimensional figure the simplest two dimensional figure is planes we call that plane as the argon plane in which the x axis is now the real axis and the vertical axis or y axis is the imaginary axis and then we revisited the three definitions the important part is the next two definitions modulus of the complex number or absolute value of the complex number which is now length it is length of line joining the origin and the point which, re which represents the complex number argument is the angle between the line which joins the origin and the point which represents complex number and positive real axis it is very important that you understand all these concepts in this lecture. I said that for previous lecture also and I am going to say that for next couple of lectures as well. It is necessary because these concepts form the foundation of complex numbers and unless and until you understand these concepts, it will be difficult to understand the functions and different representations that we are going to consider for the complex numbers. And that's it for today's lecture. Thank you for watching this video.